Okay. Hello STEM enthusiasts, welcome to the second episode of Scientix TV. If you watched our pilot last month, welcome back. If you're here for the first time, let me explain. This show is our way of thanking teachers for all their work, as well as sharing industry contributions to STEM education and highlighting the work of European School Nets Ministries of Education. It is a place to learn something new, meet like-minded colleagues, or just share a laugh. We received a lot of great feedback on our pilot episode, and we're taking it to heart. Many of you loved our life experiment, and this time we will list the necessary ingredients and materials as per your request. We always love to hear from you, especially with suggestions for future topics. So thank you for sharing your thoughts on social media with the hashtag ScientixTV, which should appear on your screens now. Now, today's topic is motivation. Now, I don't need to tell you that teaching is hard work. It takes effort sometimes just to stay motivated. So how do you do it? And how do you motivate yourself to go beyond your, your core classroom activities or duties? We will speak with three award-winning teachers and hear how, hear how they manage to go the extra mile. We'll also hear from a Microsoft representative who will explain to us how industry can support teachers and help them stay motivated. And of course, it would not be the Scientix TV without a map from our colleague Isidora and that beloved experiment. Now, first, let me introduce you to my co-presenter today, Ivana Milanovic, who coordinates the Scientix Ambassadors program. Ivana, can you tell us more about the program and who you will be talking to today? Hi, Agada. Yes, of course. So Scientix Ambassadors help Scientix promote and improve STEM education at the national level. Their work is essential for expanding and supporting the STEM teaching community in their countries. These amazing teachers make sure their colleagues have the chance to share good classroom practices and especially around STEM topics. There are now 1,011 Scientix Ambassadors in 50 countries. Two of them will join us today. Panagiot Argiri and Selchuk Yusuf Arslan. We also have with us John Hale, a pilot teacher in the three R's, which is an education project of the Joint Research Center. Panagiot teaches mathematics at a high school in Athens in Greece, and Selchuk teaches computer science at a vocational high school in Ankara in Turkey. And uh, John is the head of biology at a school on the island of Jersey in the UK. Thank you so much for making uh, for a time for us today. Now, let me see a quick show of hands. Who of you has ever entered an education competition or won an award of any kind? <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Thank you. And again, by show of hands, who of you has mentored or trained other teachers? Amazing. That must be a lot of work. Panagiotta, let's start with you. What motivates you to put in that kind of extra effort? Well, my greatest motivation is to prepare young people for the rapid changes we see in the labor markets. I believe teachers has a crucial role to play in this. We can just provide them with uh, the subject knowledge required for their careers. We also need to make sure they have the right attitudes and skills to be good citizens and decision makers and to teach them how to play an active role in determining their future. So I focus not only on the mathematics content required by the national curriculum, but also on the personal, social, and emotional development of my students, seeing them leave our school ready for the future is my greatest motivation. Thank you, Panagiotta. That's really interesting. Uh, John uh, Selchuk, is this the same for you? Are there any other factors motivating you? Um, in terms of me, I, I love science. I love sharing science. I love 
the ability to just talk um, about all of the little complexities of life. And I think that's what's really special about biology is it's all around us all of the time. There's, there's nothing that you cannot get excited about in terms of biology. And that's what I share with my students is that passion to know a little bit more and encourage them to, to go that little bit further to continue their studies as far as they can and really push themselves to the limit. Um, and it's that whole thing of, if you can model excellence, hopefully, hopefully those students will follow in those footsteps as well. Thank you, John. And uh, Selchuk, what about you? Is this the same for you? Uh, first of all, I must state that I agree with Panagiota and John. Uh, in addition, I love spending time with my students. Uh, I do extracurricular work with them. It makes, makes me uh, incredibly happy to see them improve. Uh, in addition, contributing to a more sustainable world uh, by giving students a sense of social responsibility is one of my most important uh, sources of motivation. Uh, as a teacher, if you inspire other teachers, that also motivates you because, because while your influence is limited, if your colleagues support you, you will create a multiplier effect. Uh, putting everything aside, I think the most important source of motivation for a teacher is intrinsic motivation. Uh, teachership is a difficult profession and what keeps you moving forward is your dedication to your job. Thank you, Selçuk. That's, uh, that's lovely. Now, all of you have won awards for your efforts. Has anything about these awards changed how you teach? Maybe the process of getting them or benefits you had from them afterward? Uh, absolutely, yes, uh, because you have to try extraordinary things to make your efforts to be noticed. Uh, I also tried different teaching methods. After receiving the award uh, by sharing these methods with my other colleagues, I make them popular. Uh, especially thanks to the awards I receive in STEM Discovery Week competitions. I had the chance to go to the Feature Classroom Lab in Brussels a few times. The workshops I attended here were so special for me and I tried to use the experiences I gained here in my lessons. Also receiving awards and being appreciated imposes a responsibility on you. That's why you try to do better. This whole process enables you to develop, apply different methods, and as a result, provide a more qualified education. Thank you, Selçuk. And besides your work as uh, teacher trainers, how do you motivate other teachers, either in your role as ambassadors or in your daily practice at school? One way how I try to inspire other teachers is supply by showing them the success of students who went through our classes uses interdisciplinary and problem-based learning scenario. For example, we used mathematical and statistical models to teach how to foresee and prevent the spread of diseases. And we also used the European materials on cultural heritage to compose mathematical problems. But also, as a scientific ambassador, I encourage my colleagues to participate in webinars and professional development courses. I participate in this as well, which keeps me updated about innovations in science education and offer me a lot of learning materials to motivate my colleagues. For example, recently, I did a workshop in my school where I presented the BRIST project which is focused on helping teachers become researchers and improve their teaching through evidence-based resources. Besides the webinars organized by STEM Alliance and scientists such as I have been skills built, inspired my colleagues and me to integrate a new platform in the classroom and take part in the competition. Thank you, Panagiota. And what tips do you have for teachers to motivate themselves? I mean, besides entering competitions or becoming ambassadors. I think as uh, Celsius said before, the, the intrinsic joy of teaching is what you need to find. 
Um, undoubtedly, there's loads of times in the, the teaching year where it's difficult, it's a bit of a trudge, maybe lots and lots of markings, but you've got to find what is it about your subject that you really enjoy? What is it that you want to, to impart upon every single student that you come across? And you've got to find that within yourself. You've got to model that behavior to them. You've got to inspire them as much as they inspire you to, to get up and do your job that you've, you're wonderful at doing. Exactly, Leon. I agree. This is very helpful. Thank you for being here with us today and thank you for all the work you do for your students and the fellow teachers. Now back to you, Agada. Thank you, Ivana, and especially to Panagiuta, Selchuk and John. Soon all you hardworking teachers will get a break, but first there's uh, one more hurdle, exams. Let's look at when different countries test their students. Isidora? Hello, Agueda. Uh, we're at the end of academic year, and this period, as you know, can be very busy for teachers because, well, exams. So we asked our scientific ambassadors, when are they, uh, the exams taking place in their countries this year? And we determined that in most of the countries, there are no exams for pre-primary and primary education. But as you see in, in this graph, uh, in secondary education, the busyness starts at the last week of May and it lasts until almost the end of June. So good luck to all students and to all the teachers who are or will be grading their exams. I hope this episode gives you some fresh air and surely some motivation. Also, as you know, in science things, we love all those teachers who go beyond their core duties and engage in additional activities. However, as you teachers have carry heavy workload and it makes it difficult to find additional time to take part in additional activities. We have asked you during the last months of the academic year, when are you the busiest? And as we can see in this map, majority of the countries in April are relaxed, but, and that's why actually you can take part in our annual STEM discovery campaign that is in this month. But if we go to May, the situation changes completely and only a few countries as Poland and Serbia are still green. And this time the business starts a lot, but it gets slightly better in June. Well, at least for the rest of the countries. And finally in July, people can breathe and take a bit of time to rest, except in Portugal and Netherlands. So a big hug to our scientists ambassador in Portugal, Netherlands, as well as India, where they're the busiest despite the hot temperature. Back to you, Agueda. Thank you, Isidora. Very interesting. However, as you all know, teachers not only prepare their students for doing well in exams, but also for succeeding in life beyond school. That's why it's important for teachers to keep up to date with what's going on outside of their classrooms. In that matter, industry partners play an essential role. Ivana, how can industry support teachers to achieve more? Hello, Agata. This is such an important question and which is why today it's my pleasure to speak with Crisante Sotiro, Microsoft Innovative Educator Fellow. Crisante, how are you today? Hello, Ivana from Athens, Greece. I'm great. Thank you for the opportunity. We are happy to have you today. Now, we all know that Microsoft offers a lot of support to teachers with tools, trainings, resources. How has Microsoft encouraged teachers to explore modern educational tools? Well, uh, I will tell you a personal story because uh, it is the story of an educator I worked for 30 years now. And it's uh, uh, educators just like our audience who want to see their students enjoy learning and help them build confidence and prepare them for their futures. And the key word here is inclusive education, student-centered classrooms offering attractive learning opportunities for all. And Microsoft is here, has been here for me since uh, 2017, uh, the first time I got the opportunity to participate in the Microsoft Innovative Educator uh, uh, program. And I got the opportunity to explore new tools, modern tools. So. It's uh, those amazing training courses in Microsoft Learn and the articles in uh, the education blog and ideas 
with educators from the Microsoft page. So Microsoft helps us motivate teachers, helps us recognize the importance of implementing new technology, which is a step toward the quality of education. Wonderful. It seems that Microsoft really cares about teachers. What do you think, why is it so important to motivate teachers and support them to try out new things? Ivana, motivation is really important because it is the key to keep uh, teachers focused, to inspire them, to help them feel worthy. Motivated teachers develop a positive climate and that's critical to an effective learning environment. And we need to motivate teachers. We need to recognize innovation, to give them the opportunity to have their say in decisions concerning pedagogy. This is what we do in our school, which is a Microsoft showcase school. And uh, teachers who are trained, they feel competent that they can do this. So encourage teachers to seek professional development opportunities, just like Microsoft Innovative Educate. Indeed, by bringing the real world into the classroom, we can make STEM learning more meaningful to our students. Of course, it should be fun too. Vicente, how are Microsoft tools supporting teachers with STEM, computer science and coding in schools? I love the word you said before, fun. <laughs> That's number one. So uh, it's not only fun, it's always um, uh, curiosity, confidence that Microsoft tools encourage. For example, make code. It is used to prepare today's students for a continuously changing future by helping them create their own code. However, it is a tool that it's not only used with computer science. It is used with um, maths, engineering, foreign languages, my area of expertise. And it adapts to real world concepts, expectations and future ready skill sets. And here also comes to Minecraft. Minecraft can provide a holistic view of real problem solving, incorporating gaming, fun, Ivana that you said before, but also science and fiction. This is a challenge, but also the key to success. And something that I want to add is that we can use it in order to create lessons within the idea of interdisciplinary curricula. The secret is that we do not build borders, we build bridges. It is not the easy way, it is challenging and rewarding. So adapt, use them in class, sign up in Microsoft Learn and get ready to be an MIE. Amazing. It sounds like lots of fun. Thank you very much, Crisante, for joining us today. Back to you, Agata. Thank you both. It's good to see how our industry partners come up with such cool ideas to support and motivate teachers. But now it's time for our most dangerous experiment, the life experiment. After last month's explosive demonstration, we decided to protect ourselves. So Isidora, what's in store? Come on, it wasn't that bad. Anyway, you won't be needing protection because this week's experiment, we are connecting with George Rungos on the Greek island of Lesbos, and we are going to, he's going to make a mess far, far away. George is our scientist ambassador and um, experiments enthusiast, and he has a channel with more than 100 video experiments. George, welcome to Scientix TV. Hello, Sidora. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the introduction. I'm George, uh, Greek scientist ambassador, and I'm training teachers in science experiments at the Laboratory Center of Natural Sciences in Mithilien. And I really love to do experiments with everyday life uh, materials. Uh, I have to tell you, I really love coffee, but I hate waiting for the water to boil. The good news is that scientists have figured out how to do it faster. And today I'm going to show you how to change the boiling point of the water. Are you ready to change the way you make coffee forever? Let's get started. We all know that the boiling point of the water is 100 Celsius, but did you know that the boiling point depends on the pressure? Uh, to change the pressure, all we need is a plastic syringe, a big one, a rubber cup, and some warm water at about uh, 70 degrees uh, Celsius. We pour the warm water in the syringe, Pushing the plunger, we take the air out. But 
this doesn't change much, right? To bring it to a boil, we close the syringe with a rubber cap very tightly. And we pull the plunger to reduce the pressure. As you can see, the water is boiling and it's only at 70 degrees Celsius. This happens because when we reduce the pressure, the bond energy also reduces and the gas is easier to expand. Some of the big bubbles inside may come from the air dissolved in the water or from the surrounding air. The boiling stops because this is an endothermic phenomenon and the water absorbs heat. To keep it boiling, we have to reduce uh, the pressure and uh, the, to continue to boil. So, if you like hiking on high mountains and want to make some coffee, your water will boil at a lower temperature than 100 Celsius. I hope you like it. Uh, don't forget to put the Scientix logo on the table for a successful experiment. Back to you, Isidora. Thanks, Isidora. And George, we cannot wait to see what experiments come next. But I'm afraid it's uh, all we have time for today. So don't forget to comment on social media using the hashtag Scientix TV. And thanks to our wonderful guests and everybody making possible Scientix TV, the show where you can look at the world through STEM glasses. Big thanks also to Microsoft, this episode's industry partner. Tune in again next month. Enjoy the spring weather and all the best from your Scientix team. Goodbye.